If you're glad you're in church today, would you say amen? amen? Praise God. It's better to be here than in the hospital. That's right. I've been in both places, and I guarantee you it's a lot better to be here in church. Amen? There's a lot of places we could be, but it's, it's good to be in church and to be in Cowboys for Jesus. I think it's the best church in Canyon Lake myself. I'm not trying to put down other church. If you're a member of another church, that's fine. We appreciate you coming here, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, uh, yeah. You know, one thing about Cowboys for Jesus is we take you the way you come. It doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter. Uh, we got one of our past... Uh, Elders in the church, on the board, he used to always come in shorts and a t-shirt, you know. That's fine. You come the way you are. And that's the way God receives us. He takes us just the way we are. But what I like about God, He doesn't leave us the way we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. He works on us and makes us better. And uh, that's what we hope that uh, will happen with you as you come to Cowboys for Jesus and uh, be with us in this service today. I don't want anybody to come and leave the same way they came. That's one of my prayers, one of my expectations, is that people will come and they'll leave a different person spiritually than the way they came. Amen? Amen. Chapter 13 and verse 13. I want to do just a little bit of a review, and uh, then we'll kick off with our message. And now abide. Faith, hope, love. These three... But the greatest of these is love. I started a couple of weeks ago with a message on blessed hope. Uh, because, you know, faith, hope, and love are the three, uh, I, I say, establishing forces in the Christian faith. You can't have faith without hope. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. And so we started first by talking about hope. And our blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 1, and verse 1 was sort of our kickoff verse for that. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. See, our hope is, is founded in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ that was risen from the dead. Jesus Christ that bore our sins on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ that suffered stripes on his back so that we could have healing. See, he wants us well. He had a crown of thorns on his head so we could have a clear mind and not suffer from depression and fear. I'll tell you what, folks. Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Lord. He is our deliverance. And we talked about that hope builds. We said hope builds. Hope doesn't disappoint. Hope sustains us. See, that we're talking about Jesus Christ. He's our hope. You know, this world is lost and undone without God. They have no hope. You walk into a, 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 a hospital room, and the doctor comes in and says there's no hope. And it, everything's just drained out of you. But when that same doctor comes in, and he says, there's hope that we're going to make it through Oh, what a difference it makes. And that's the way it is with Jesus Christ. When Jesus is in your life, you have hope. Hope is alive. And that he promises us a future in heaven. There's a hope in heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, one day you can be with me. Now, I'm not trying to get a, a, a group together to go today. Come on. But isn't it, isn't it wonderful to know that we have a... This is just the beginning of life. This is just a, a vapor, a shadow of the life that we can enjoy with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the next week I talked about applied faith. Last Sunday. In Hebrews 11.6, it says... Or 11.1, we just covered that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. See, hope builds our faith. Hope builds our faith. 
Faith is the substance. It gives the material of what hope did. See, hope's always in the future. If you got it now, it's not hope. Huh? Come on. It, I sure hope I have a Bible. Oh, I got it. So I don't hope for that Bible, do I? See, hope is always something out there. The, the, the biblical definition of hope, boy, I don't know why I'm staying on this, but somebody needs it. Maybe they wasn't here. The biblical definition of hope is expectation. It's a future, but it's expectation. A confident expectation of what God is going to do. A confident expectation of what God is going to do. Well, faith gives substance to that hope. Faith is the evidence of the things we can't see. See, if we can't see it, then it needs hope. Come on. And so we talked about faith. That See, uh, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But that he who comes to God must believe that God is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I said God is a rewarder of those that will seek him. See, faith is, he gives us faith. He says that to each one of us is given the measure of faith. So he doesn't require something of us that we're not able to do, but faith comes by hearing the Word of God. That's why it's good that you're in church today. Because you're hearing the Word of God. Do you know some churches don't preach the Word of God? Shame, shame, shame. I mean that there, there's Christian churches. I say that with quotations because i got a real question. But there's Christian churches that preach all kinds of other things, but they don't preach Jesus Christ. They don't preach faith. They don't preach hope. They don't preach love. Cowboys for Jesus preaches the Bible. So we talked about living by faith because we want to please God. And we said that there's ways that we can do it. We call it going back to school because school started. All right? And we talked about the ABCs of faith. And the A for faith is abide in the Word of God. See, faith comes from the Word of God. Agree, I'm sorry. Agree with the Word of God. I'm abiding in it. Hallelujah. But I'm agreeing with it too. Isn't it wonderful to have a wife? Because she reminded me it was agreeing, not abiding. I'll tell you what, she's put up with me 52 years. Can you all say God bless Paula? God bless Paula. Woo. Y'all need to pray for her. Hallelujah. Anyway, and A is agree with God. Agree with God's Word. B is believe God's Word. There's a difference between agreeing with something and believing something. Huh? Come on. If you believe, in, it, it's, it, it, my mama says it's in your knower. You know it in your knower. That's when you're believing it. When it's in the heart, not the head. And we talked about that. And then C is confess the Word of God. Say what God says. See, in Romans 10, 9, it says, the way that we get saved is we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And the Bible says you'll be saved. See, faith, you can believe it, but if you don't give life to it. See, Jesus, in, in God, in the beginning, in Genesis, the first chapter, talks about that God said... And creation was. God said in creation was. See, there's power in God's Word. When God's Word was in God's mouth, it created this world. Did you know that there was power in Jesus' words? He said, whatever I do, I see my Father doing. Whatever I say, I hear my Father saying. He said what God said, and there was power. The disciples, He sent them forth. He says, all authority has been given to me, now you go. And so they went forth. The disciples put God's word in their mouth and it had power. Well, I'm telling you folks, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you'll put God's word in your mouth, you will see the power of God operate in your life. So we have to confess. Agree, believe, confess. D was do. It's do the word of God. See, faith without works is dead. I said faith without works is dead. So you need to ask God, if you're believing God for something, 
If you're taking it by faith, come on, then ask God, what do you want me to do? What action can I put with it? Ask him. See, Peter and John, when they went to the gate beautiful and the crippled man was there, they said, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, what do I have? I have Jesus. He said, I, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It says the Bible said, Peter reached down and pulled him up. That was the doing. That was the action. He said, well, what if he had fallen down? Well, what if he had? Pick him up again. Because see, the word of God is true. In the name of Jesus is all powerful. But he says, he picked him up, and it says the man went leaping and jumping and praising God. That's the doing to it. After church last Sunday, I was right back over there. And these two ladies, they told me, they said, you left out one. I said, oh, what's that? They said, the E. A, B, C, D, E. I said, well, wh wh what's that? It's in joy. And I've been thinking about that all week. See, if you will apply the agreeing, the believing, the confessing, and the doing, you're going to enjoy what faith produces in your life. Amen? You'll enjoy the fruit of your faith. Hallelujah. Well, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 again. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three. Everybody say this with me. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. So today I want to talk to you about love. How many know God is love? 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved, that's talking to us. Say, I'm beloved. I'm See, God loves you. I, I, you can preach a whole message on that one word. I'm going to try. <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. For everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now leave that there for just a minute. I want you to look at what it says. First he says, beloved. He's talking to us. That means that he loves you. He loves me. And he said, love is of God. We're talking about agape love. We're not talking about eros love. We're not talking about phileo love. Come on. We're not talking about storge love. We're talking about agape love. Agape love is unselfish, unconditional love. That means that I'm not loving you to get something from you. You know, so many people, oh, man, I love you, you know. And, uh, listen, would you help me do this, this, and this? Come on. See, you love because you want something in return. But God loved you when you were still a sinner. God loved us just the way we were. He still does. He loves me just the way I am. Hallelujah for that. Everyone who loves is what? What? So you're born of love. Did you know you're a love baby? Huh? I mean, I'm old enough that I remember in the 70s they talk about love child, you know. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm a love child. I'm born of love. You see, the Bible says that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. That old things have passed away. That new things have come. And that new thing is love. Because see, without God in your life, you can't really love. And oh, we just throw that word around. We love hamburgers. We love ice cream. Come on, how many love ice cream? Yeah, you know. I mean... Uh, we were at a funeral this weekend, and, and, and after the funeral, instead of having, you know, a food or a get-together for family and all, because this guy was a sweetaholic. He loved desserts. And so they had a dessert bar, and they had every kind of dessert you can imagine. I had a heyday in there, I'll tell you. I was visiting with everybody at this table and over here at this table and visiting with, you know. I was trying them all. Hallelujah.
How did I get off on that love? But, you know, we throw the word love around so much. But we're talking about love that God loves. And it says we're to love one another. John 3 and 16. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave. I said God gave. His only begotten son. So that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. See, the wages of sin is death. But God's love, He was willing to give His only Son. How precious is that? He was willing. It is, the Bible says that Jesus left heaven, all the glory of heaven, left that glory and took on an earthly form, took on a human body. Can you imagine the ultimate God the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-sufficient God put himself in a human body? I mean, just think of the limitations that we have. The pain that we can feel. Jesus became man because he loved you and he loved me so much. He willingly gave his life for me and you. Greater love hath this than uh, uh, greater love hath no man than this, but that he give his life for his friends. And Jesus gave his life for me and you. That's love. John chapter fifteen, verse nine. As the Father loved me. I also have loved you. Abide in my love. See, God loved you so much that He sent His Son, but His Son came willingly. When He was in heaven, He said, I need somebody to take the sin of the world away. And Jesus says, I'm here. Send me. But you're my only son. You're my only son. You'll have to become a human. You'll have to die on the cross. His goal from the day of his birth, he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the Bible says. See, the, the lamb, the redemption comes from the blood sacrifice. And that sacrifice came through Jesus Christ. It shed his blood for me and for you. Under the law, they killed a lamb on the altar. They called it a sin offering. And it covered the sin of the people for one year. But every year they had to come back over and over and over and over again to kill another lamb, to shed the blood, to cover their sins. But Jesus came and took our sins away once and for all. When he died on the cross of Calvary, he died for my sins. Way out here in the future. I don't understand it. I can't explain it to you logically, but it's true. And one day I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I said, I thank you that you died for my sin. And you know what? Something new happened on the inside. I can't explain it. But it was like taking a bath. I mean, it was just a cleansing that came through and washed away all that crud. And you know I'm clean even today? Come on. If you know Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Say, yeah, but what if I mess up tomorrow? Hey, if you messed up yesterday, your sins were in the future when he died on the cross. So what's the difference with you committing a sin tomorrow? Now, I don't go out and sin. I like the way that uh, Pastor John Osteen, we worked at Lakewood Church, we were members there. And Brother Osteen, he'd say, I sin all I want to. Come on. Every one of us can sin all we want to. He said, I don't want to sin. I don't know about you, but I don't want to mess up. I don't want to sin. But when I do, I know I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ. And I can come to him, I say, I messed up. I'm so sorry. He says, I forgive you. He says, I I died on the cross. My blood was shed for you because I love you. 
And we're to love each other just the way that God loved us. Where are we? John 15. Did we finish that? No. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Everybody say, keep my commandments. You will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. You say, well, wait a minute. I thought we wasn't under the law. You know, this says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. So how can he say, this is John, this is the disciple Jesus loved. Come on. He's the one writing this. So how can he say, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love? You mean I can't make it without abiding in his commandments? I don't know about you. Come on. Do you read the Bible and try to understand it, or do you just read the words? I mean, come on, folks. I'm being serious here. Sometimes we read over stuff, and, and but you need to stop and think about it. So what is it saying? If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. What is implying to me, if I don't keep his commandments, I won't abide in his love, right? I mean, am I thinking... Is, I'm just a country boy from East Texas, but I can figure that out. If you do something, then this. If you don't do something, more than likely that. Right? If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. See, Jesus kept God's commandments. Are you with me? Well, what is His commandment? Matthew 22. This is Jesus' words Himself. The, see, the Sadducees had come to Jesus and they were asking him all kinds of questions and stuff. And he answered them and, and he shut them up. I mean, did you know Jesus was smart? He's smarter than you are. He's smarter than I am. I know for a fact. My wife tells me all the time. No. <laughs> come on. So, after the Sadducees got put down, the Pharisees said, ah, we'll come. See, there was two religious groups in that day. We got more than two today. You know that? And so when one couldn't, couldn't figure Jesus out, the other one said, well, we got it. And so one of these scribes comes to Jesus and said, Teacher, what's the greatest commandment in the law? Come on, he's trying to trick Jesus, get him to say something that they can hold against him. Next verse. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, this is the first and great commandment of the Ten Commandments we're talking about. Love God. How many in here love God? All right. So are you obeying a commandment? Huh? All right. So it says, love God. This is the first and greatest commandment. But he didn't stop there. What did he say next? The second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So what he was saying, if you love God and you love your neighbor, can you keep the Ten Commandments? You sure can. See, he just summarized it. He puts it down where we can, uh, we can get it. Even old Dennis can understand it. Huh? Come on. Love God? That's vertical. Love your fellow man? That's horizontal. That's the cross. Love God? Love your fellow man. See, if you do that, you're abiding in God's love. That's why he can say, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. Come on. That's good preaching, Pastor. Let's go back. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 11. These things have I spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. How many want the joy of the Lord? See, the Bible says joy of the Lord is your strength. I don't know about you, but there's days I need strength. I need spiritual strength each and every day. So, if I love God, 
and I'm loving my fellow man as best I know how. Come on now. I'm abiding in His love. And He said that He spoke those things to us. Abiding in His love. Loving God. Loving your fellow man. Walking in love. He says, I've given you those things so that you can be full of joy. You can shout and say amen. You can rejoice in times of trouble. Why? Because God loves me. I love God. It's going to be okay. This is my commandment. What? Is that one of the commandments we just covered? Yeah. It's the second. That you love one another. Ah. Remember, when we read it in Matthew, he said that you love others, your neighbor, as you love yourself. But he puts a little twist on it. I like that twist. He said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Oh, that's a whole different thing. See, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, how many of you ever get mad at yourself? Huh? How many ever get disappointed in yourself? I mean, I could have a pity party with myself sometimes. But he says, don't just love them like you love yourself because you're still human. But you love them the way I loved them. That's agape love. You love them without conditions. You love them not expecting something in return. You love them unselfishly. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15 and verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Verse 17. These things I command you that you love one another. Now do you see this together? He says, I chose you. You know you're chosen of God? He's got plans and purposes for your life that only you can fulfill. He's given fingerprints to you that nobody else has. You're an individual. And He's got plans and purposes for you that nobody else can fulfill. They might do something similar, but they can't do what you can do. And He says, I, I've chosen you that you could go and bear fruit. In other words, He wants you to be productive in the plans that He has for you. And the way that you can be productive is to walk in love. To love as He loved you. He says, by this shall people know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another. Do you know what the world needs is love? What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Come on. We can have a singing party here. See, there's so much truth sometimes in, in, in even secular songs and stuff. But God wants us to love people because He loved people. You studied the life of Jesus in the Gospels and Jesus showed compassion upon people. What's the difference between love and compassion? See, love is that unselfish giving of yourself, but compassion identifies with whatever they're going through. Feels the pain, sees the suffering, identifies it, makes it their own. And he was moved with compassion. For the people were like sheep without a shepherd. And he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he forgave their sins. Wow. First John 4. Verse 10 says, In this is love. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Are you learning something about love? See, the greatest of these is love. And this is love. Not that we love God. We just raise our hands. We love God, right? But it's not that... We love God, but that He loved us. And He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. 
Now, I don't know about you, but this old East Texas boy I had to look up that word. Because that's one of those big religious words. Come on. But you know, we use it all the time and we don't know it. Or I didn't. I got to look it up. I know it's good, right? Because he sent Jesus to be the propitiation for my sin. I know he took my sins away. Well, that word, propitiation, is an action to regain someone's favor or to make up for whatever error or something that you did wrong. It's to appease, these are synonyms, to appease, to pacify, to placate. In other words, to make up for. But did you know we couldn't, you can't be good enough for your sins to go away? I can't be goody two shoes. Come on now. I can't be good enough to get to heaven. And yet when you talk to somebody, do you know Jesus, are you sure you're going to go to heaven? They'll say, well, I sure hope so. Well, I think so. Well, I've been a lot better than I have bad. Come on. Huh? Have y'all ever heard that? You talk to somebody? I mean, I, uh, when I was working full time, I mean, this is work. <laughs> Pastoring is work if you don't know it. But when I had a secular job, I'll put it that way, I was talking to one of the guys at work. He was my supervisor, as a matter of fact, and we'd gone out to eat together, and I said, I said, do you, do you really know Jesus? Oh, yeah, I go to church. I said, yeah, but... But do you know Jesus? I said, if you were to die right now, you know, you choke on something and you die right now. I said, are you sure you'd go to heaven? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I said, well, why would they let you in? Huh? I mean, how are you going to get into heaven? Well, he says, I don't run around on my wife. I said, that's good. Come on. He says, I... I'm better than, and he started naming off some folks. Well, that's good. I mean, because I knew them, right? <laughs> and he, he says, you know, I think I'm a lot better than I am bad. So he says, yeah, I think I'll go to heaven. I mean, see, most people, they think they got scales out there. And God's saying, if, you, if you're better, in other words, if you live a, a more righteous life than you do a bad life. If you do more good things than you do bad things, then surely that, that, that's what does it, you know? Well, where's, where's the scale at that? Is it just one thing? Do I got to do two things? Do I got to do three things more? Uh, can I do just a half a thing? Just a white lie, not a, not, a, not a real lie. Come on. But you see, people think that way because they don't know the Word of God. We can't make it on our own. We needed a Savior. And Jesus is our Savior. He loved us so much that while I was still a sinner, He gave His life for me. When I still mess up, His blood is sufficient for me. There's no sin you commit. There's no life you can live that the blood of Jesus is not powerful enough to cleanse you and make you right with the Father. To make you, a, or He became a propitiation. Come on. So you, you can say, I learned a religious word today. Somebody said, what did you learn in church today? I learned propitiation. That means that He takes away what I did wrong. And He makes it right. Because it's not by works that we are saved, but it's by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Where was I? I forget where I'm at. James chapter 2. If you really fulfill the royal law, according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many have ever heard the golden rule? Or the royal law? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But see, we do unto others as Jesus did to us. Come on. That's the law. So we've got a royal law. We're of the kingdom of God. So we got a royal law. But you know you also have a perfect law? James 1. Chapter right before this. It says, If anyone is a hearer of the word 
and not a doer. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. He observes himself, goes away, and forgets what he really is. Huh? Come on. Did you know, what, what do you look like? Huh? Have you ever seen your face? No, you've seen a reflection of your face. Come on. Huh? How many ever seen yourself? You don't. You see a reflection. You look in a mirror. Or you look in a window that's dark enough and you can get a reflection out of it. Come on. So what are you seeing? You're seeing what you think you look like. You're a reflection. Well, when we show forth the love of God, think of it this way. The sun is the light. S-U-N. In the sky. The hot sun that we see in August. The 100 degree days hot sun we've been suffering with. Come on. The moon is a reflection of the sun. How many know that? We're having our physical science class. Okay. So you've got the sun, which is the true light. You've got the moon, which is a reflection of that light. Jesus is the love. God is love. We are to love as He loved. We are a reflection of His love. Come on. So when people look at the moon, you know, you can't look at the sun. It hurts your eyes. You got to punch a little hole in the cardboard and hold it up with a paper. You, you know, I've done all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm a good boy. But I can look at the moon. I see the moon and the moon sees me. What am I seeing? I'm seeing a reflection of the sun. Because the sun's up there all the time. The moon's up there all the time. They just, the earth rotates so that we can't see them all at the same time. Sometimes you can. I'm seeing all this to get you to see that you can hear the Word of God. You can agree with the Word of God. You can believe the Word of God. You can say, yes, I, I'm a lover. You can confess the Word of God. But unless you do the Word of God, you've got to be that reflection of the light of God. You've got to be the reflection of the love of God. And you're doing that by loving one another as God loves you. Next verse says that. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful here, but one but a doer of the work. This one is blessed in whatever he does. So how do I love? That's my question, right? We've got to do the love of God. Are you with me? Come on, stay with me now. It's not noon yet. I'll get you out to eat in time. <laughs> but this is in, we've led up to, to all of this to find out something. How do I love as God loves me. What do I got to do to be a lover, to be a reflection, to be a light, to walk in that perfect law, that royal law of love? How do we carry this thing out? Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. We'll start with verse 1 and then go down to 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, see, as a child of God, as the beloved that we talked about in the beginning, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. That's the vertical. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That points us to the cross. Through whom also we have access by faith unto this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. In other words, I've got everything right with God. He's forgiven me. I'm forgiven. I'm loved. I'm the beloved. So that part's right. Now it's this part that we're talking about. How can me, 
a human being, flesh and blood, love somebody else the way that God loves me? That's what I'm asking. Well, verse 5 gives us the answer to that. Romans 5, 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God, everybody say the love of God, God. has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that's given to us. You see, you can't do it on your own. How many ever tried to love the unlovely? It's hard. Come on. But you see, the Holy Spirit of God, the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus Christ when He walked the earth, lives and dwells in each and every believer. If you accept Jesus Christ, He says, when I leave, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and He will be with you. He will be your comforter. He will be your guide. He'll speak to you and show you the truth. Huh? Come on. It's because the love of God is shed abroad. In other words, the love of God comes through us. We're a channel of blessing. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a channel of blessing. You're a channel of blessing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, and that love that God has for you flows out from you to somebody else. And it does it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you want to love the unlovely, you say, man, I don't know how to... I mean, that person is so ugly to me. Come on. What does the Bible say? It says, love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Come on now, I'm getting down... This is a nitty gritty. And my mama used to say, this is where the rubber meets the road, son. We want to love like God loves. We want to love our fellow man because we want them to know Jesus. And the, way, the only way you can do it is being led by that love, being led by the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. It's following the flow of love. I said it's following the flow of love. See, the Holy Spirit is what gave Jesus that compassion. And He'll give that same compassion to you if you'll yield yourself to Him. If you'll say, Holy Spirit, come in and help me to love. When you see the unlovely, help me to love. Let me tell you a story. It happened this week. I'm going along, I'm minding my own business. And, And I'm just doing what I do. And a brother in our church that hadn't been here for quite a while because he's a police officer and, and so he works a lot of Sundays, doesn't get off all the time. And I know he's been going through some hard times, but that was months ago that I knew that. Are you with me? But I'm just minding my own business. I'm just going along and all of a sudden his name comes to me. You say, well, that's just a thought. See? If, you, if you're walking in love, if you're going to show forth the love of God, you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. As that name came to me, and I said, oh, yeah, I said, Lord, bless so-and-so. Come on. Just a sweet little short, come on. <laughs> I'm doing my duty. Come on, I'm, I'm telling you the truth now. I'm just doing my duty. I just said a prayer for him and went on. Well, a bit later that day, his name came back to me. I said, hmm. Even this old hard-headed boy can, you know. And so I prayed a little bit better. (laughs) Then the next day, his name came back to me. You see... I mean, even I can understand, Lord, you got something going on here. What is it? It's the love of God wanting to flow out of me. Come on. His, his love flow out from this vessel to be a blessing to that person. So smart me, I mean, you know, rocket scientist here. I said, I'll text him a message. And so I texted him. I said, I'll tell you what. I don't know what you're going through. 
I don't know what, what's happening in your life, but God put you on my heart. And I said, I've been praying for you, but I don't really know how to pray. So I'm, I'm just praying the best I know how. But I want you to know that you're not in it alone. That God knows where you are. God knows what you're going through. And God is touching me. And I don't know how many other people that God has put on their heart and they're praying for you and you can make it. I mean, like that, I get a text back. Oh, you don't know how much I need that. My wife's going through all this kind of stuff going on with some cancer. We're having trouble with our house. I got a teenage son. That says enough. And he said, not only that, but he says, we got a new boss at work. How many knows that's stress? And he says, I got two new supervisors. How many know that's stress? And he says, everything is in turmoil at work. I thought, whoa. So I had to write him again. And I ministered to him in a modern day text, you know. What am I saying? I'm saying if you want to walk in the love of God, you've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that's in you. And when you have that little nudge, when you have that little elbow in the side from the Holy Ghost, come on. Give in to it. Pick up the phone. Call somebody. Text somebody. If you see somebody and you say, oh, man, I love that. Go over and hug them. Tell them so. Man, we send flowers to funeral. I was at that funeral. They send all these flowers and stuff. You send flowers to funeral. Send them when they're alive, folks. Yeah. Ladies, make a pine. Take it over to somebody's house. Go cut somebody's yard. Wait till it's green. But come on. I'm talking about letting the love of God flow through you to somebody else. To love your neighbor the way that God loved you. And gave himself. Don't expect anything in return. Just give a copy love. Amen? Philippians chapter 2. And I'm closing with this. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, is there? Yes. If any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. In other words, be full of the love of God. Be full of the compassion. Be full of the joy. Having the same love. Being of one mind or one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. See, the love of God says, come on now, everybody else is better than you are. Do you know you'll never judge somebody if they're better than you are? Come on. See, we want to make ourselves feel good by judging somebody else. Come on. I'm talking, that's not love. Love says you esteem everybody else better than yourself. What can I do for you? How can I serve you? How can I show myself, let the love of God reflect off of me into your life? That's what it's all about, folks. Amen? Amen. Did you get something out of this today? I want to close with this one verse, Matthew 25 and verse 40. If you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. That's Jesus. He said, if you've done it unto the least, you've done it to me. So if you want to walk in love, love as Jesus loved you, and know that you're doing it for Him. Amen? Amen? And He'll give you your reward. You remember, never, never see it in this life. I believe you will. 
But even if you don't, you'll see it in heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father God, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for this message of hope and faith and love. Help us, dear Lord, this week to love as you've loved us. Help us to look for opportunities to show forth the love of God in our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be sensitive to receive your love and to give it away to someone that needs it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Is Darcy here? All right, come up here, young lady. This is our missionary to places we can't talk about. <laughs> to kingdom places. And uh, we want to bless her. We want to... She is fixing to leave family, home, comfort, the United States, and she's going to go to places that don't allow everybody in. She's going to go to places that are hard, but that need the gospel. And they need the gospel with all they've got. If you hadn't, she came and brought a wonderful message to us. But she's a missionary's missionary. So, I want to pray over her. I want you to join. Stretch out your hands this way. And we're going to pray. And, and we're not taking up an offering, but if, if, if the Lord touches your heart and you want to let the love of God flow through you, Give them one of them Pentecostal handshakes, we call it, where you got a little money in your hand when you <laughs> shake her hand. I know she could use it as she's fixing to leave. Father God, we praise you and thank you for Starcy. We thank you, Lord, for her love that she's showing to unlovely people. Lord, the love of God is shed abroad in Starcy's heart through the power of the Holy Ghost. So, Father, we just... Bless her today in the name of Jesus. We pray, dear Lord, that you would guard her steps, that you would lead her by your Holy Spirit, that you would tell her to go this way and not that way, that you give her discernment, dear Lord, to know who to talk to and who not to talk to, dear Lord, that you would put your guardian angels round about her to protect her and to keep her safe in all of her ways, dear Lord that you'd give her the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God, that you would anoint her with your power, that the words that she speaks, dear Lord, will make a difference, a seed planted in the life of these individuals, dear Lord, that will produce a harvest of love, a harvest of God in their lives, in Jesus' name. We praise you and thank you for her willingness to go and her family to let her go, Lord and to put her in your hands. And we know that that's the safest place she can be, in the palm of your hand. Thank you, Lord, for Starcy and her ministry. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you dismissed at Cowboy Church when the preacher says, y'all come back now, you hear?